Literature with Purva. Today we are going to discuss the famous Victorian novel Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. So at first we are going to take a look at the important characters of the novel. Then we are going to discuss the detailed summary of the novel. And finally we are going to take a look at the themes of Great Expectations. So if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel then do subscribe to it and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update. Great Expectations is a building Roman novel that focuses on the social, educational and psychological growth of Pip, its protagonist. It appeared serially in the magazine called All the Year Round between 1860 and 1861. Finally, it was published in 1861 by Chapman and Hall in three volumes. Great Expectations is the only novel of Charles Dickens apart from David Copperfield that is completely narrated in first person. Although Great Expectations received a lot of praise from different people, but there was one author named Thomas Carlyle who referred to the novel as pip nonsense. So that's a comment that he gave about Great Expectations that it is all about pip nonsense. Now, a very important fact about Great Expectations is that Charles Dickens wrote two endings for Great Expectations. In the first ending, Estella remarries and Pip remains single. A friend of Charles Dickens and who is also an author, William Wilkie Collins, objected to the not happy ending of Great Expectations. Therefore, Charles Dickens wrote a more conventional ending where the readers can understand that Pip and Estella will ultimately get married. And this ending is available to us today. Before taking a look at the plot of the novel, let's first take a look at the most important characters of the novel, Great Expectations. So the protagonist is Philip Pirip, nicknamed Pip. He's an orphan and he's raised by his sister and brother-in-law. Mr. Joe Gagri, Pip's brother-in-law, and a blacksmith by profession. He is very kind and friendly to Pip and is a father figure in Pip's life. Mrs. Joe Gagri, Pip's adult sister who raises him after their parents' death. She has a very bad temper and she often beats Pip. After an attack, she becomes paralyzed and then later she dies. Mr. Pumblechook, uncle of Joe Gagri and a corn merchant. He is the person who connects Pip to Miss Havisham and therefore he is important. Miss Havisham, a wealthy woman and owner of Satis House. She lives in Satis House with her beautiful adopted daughter Estella. Now Miss Havisham is wearing her wedding gown and wonderful wedding shoes since the day her fiancé left her at the altar. Her house is also completely changed from the day it was decorated for her wedding. All the clocks of the house are stopped at exactly 20 minutes to 9 because that is the time when her fiancé left her. And this is the reason why Miss Havisham hates men and want to take revenge against men by raising her adopted daughter Estella in such a way that she can break their hearts and Pip becomes an innocent victim in Miss Havisham's play. Estella, the beautiful adopted daughter of Miss Havisham. Pip falls madly in love with her when he visits the Satis house. But Estella never reciprocate Pip's love and is always cold towards Pip. In fact, she warns Pip that she can never reciprocate his love but Pip still chooses to pursue her. Later, it is revealed that Estella is the daughter of Jagger's housekeeper, Molly, and a convict called Abel Magwitch. Later, Estella marries Bentley Drummer, who is interested in only Miss Havisham's fortune. Herbert, Pip's friend in London. Abel Magwitch, a convict who escapes from the prison ship. Pip meets him in his childhood and helps him with food. Later, he becomes Pip's unknown benefactor. Compeson, Abel Magwitch's enemy. He is also a convict who escapes from the prison ship. 
and he's the person who left Miss Havisham on the wedding day. Next we have Mr. Jaggers, a famous lawyer in London. He represents Pip's benefactor. Molly, Mr. Jaggers' housekeeper. Later she is revealed to be Estella's mother and Abel Magwitt's estranged wife. Finally, we have Biddy. Biddy is a sweet girl of Pip's age. She is also an orphan like Pip. She is an intelligent girl who teaches in an evening school. When Mrs. Cho gets paralyzed, Biddy comes to their house to take care of her. Pip always ignores Biddy's affections for him because he is busy pursuing Estella. Later, when Pip wants to marry Biddy, he finds out that Biddy has already married Joe Gagory. Now let's take a look at the plot of the novel. Great Expectations opens with a very bleak description of Pip's early life. Pip is an orphan raised by his harsh sister and his kind brother-in-law, Joe. Two incidents in his childhood changes Pip's life. The first is Pip's terrifying encounter with a convict at his parents' graveyard whom Pip ultimately helps with food. The second is when Pip is called to Satis house to provide company to its weird owner, Miss Havisham, and her beautiful but arrogant daughter, Estella. For Pip, Satis house represents the refined gentlemanly life. The visit to Satis house completely changes Pip's life. Pip falls madly in love with Estella and wants to be worthy of her. Therefore, he wants to become a gentleman after visiting Satis house. Estella, on the other hand, treats him coldly and insults him for his coarse hands and boots. However, the insult only sharpens Pip's desire to become a gentleman and be worthy of her. However, Pip's low social situation makes his gentlemanly aspirations impossible. But one day, a lawyer called Jaggers visits Pip and his guardians with the news that an unknown benefactor has left Pip a large fortune with only one condition attached, that Pip uses some of the money to acquire the habits and education for being a gentleman. In the second part of Great Expectations, Pip is in London pursuing his education. He has transformed himself into a gentleman and is now embarrassed about his past acquaintances. His visits to Joe have become less and less frequent. He has also become arrogant and egoistic. Pip believes that it is Miss Havisham who, like a fairy godmother, has brought miraculous changes in his fortune. He is certain that Miss Havisham is his unknown benefactor who wants Pip to marry Estella. Therefore, she is trying to convert Pip into a gentleman. Estella, on the other hand, remains as aloof as ever to Pip's love. When Pip declares his feelings for her, Estella says, that she is incapable of any tender feelings. At the end of book two, the sensational revelation takes place that it is not Miss Havisham, but the convict whom Pip had helped as a child, who is his benefactor. The name of the convict is Abel Mackwich. In the third part of Great Expectations, Pip decides that he will not keep the money that Mackwich, his criminal benefactor, had given him. Magwitch shares his past history with Pip and tells him that Compeson is another convict and he is the fraudster who left Miss Havisham on her wedding day. Estella announces to Pip that she is planning to marry Bentley Drummer, thereby breaking his heart. Miss Havisham now repents for ruining Estella's and Pip's chances for happiness. She apologizes to Pip and accidentally sets her dress on fire. Although Pip saves her, she ultimately dies, apologizing to Pip for her actions. Pip gets to know that Estella is the daughter of Molly, Jagger's housekeeper, and Abel Magwitch.
Pip commits himself to do everything he can to protect Magwitch from the law, which says that he will be sentenced to death because he has escaped from the prison in Australia. Magwitch has traveled from Australia to London only so that he could see the gentleman that he created. The third part of the novel is dominated by restless journeys. Magwitch dies and Pip suffers from a fatal fever during which everything seems disordered. Joe tends to Pip through his fever and helps in his rehabilitation. After Pip recovers, he asks for Joe's forgiveness. Pip wants to propose to Biddy but finds out that she has married Joe and he is happy for Joe and Biddy. With the help of his friend Herbert, Pip finds himself a modest job, works hard and becomes a responsible man. After working for many years in Egypt, Pip returns to England to visit Joe, Biddy and their son Pip Jr. Finally, in the ruins of the Satis house, Pip meets Estella, who is now a widow. Estella asks Pip to forgive her and tells him that misfortune has opened her heart. Pip finally takes Estella's hand in his. And this is how the novel ends. Now let's take a look at the two most important themes of the novel. The first important theme of Great Expectations is social class. Throughout the novel, Charles Dickens has explored the class system of Victorian England beautifully. He has shown the life of the most wretched criminals, such as Abel Magwitch, to poor peasants living in the country, such as Joe and Biddy, to the middle class, such as Mr. Pumblechook, to the very rich, such as Miss Havisham. The social class and the class system is central to the plot of the novel. It also leads to Pip's ultimate realization that wealth and class are less important than loyalty, affection and inner worth. The second important theme of the novel is ambition and self-improvement. When Pip goes to Santa's house, he longs for self-improvement. He wants to become a gentleman. Pip's desire for self-improvement is the source of the title of the novel, Great Expectations. Despite all odds, Pip believes in the possibility of advancement of life. He has great expectations about his future. Ambition and self-improvement takes three forms in the novel, moral, social and educational. We can see that Pip longs for moral self-improvement. He is extremely harsh on himself whenever he behaves immorally. Pip longs for social and educational improvement so that he can be worthy of Estella. He believes that a complete education is required to being a gentleman. But at the end of the novel, Pip realizes that social and educational self-improvement are irrelevant to a person's real worth. What is most important is how a person is from within. Pip understands that loyalty, affection and inner worth are the most important thing in a person's life. So that's it about today's video. If you found the video helpful, then do like it and share with all your friends. I'll be back next week with a new video on a literary work. Do subscribe to my channel and stay tuned to Learning Literature with Purva. Thanks for watching.